Ah, still the contact process. The flow diagram below shows the contact process, important, you're now thinking sulfur, for the production of sulfuric acid. Write down the name of product A. Well, product A must be coming through here, there's product A. So we started with sulfur and air coming in. The burning of sulfur gives us product A. And product A then must be sulfur dioxide. And they asked for the name, so the formula is not going to do it. I need to write sulfur sulfur dioxide. The memo here would also accept um, sulfur um, three oxide, oh, sorry, sulfur four oxide. The catalyst used in the contact process. Again, this is some learning work you need to go and make note of. It is vanadium pentoxide. Step, two, step B consists of two steps. Firstly, SO3 gas is dissolved in concentrated sulfuric acid, and then the resultant product is added to water. So it's first added to concentrated sulfuric acid, and then step two, it's added to water. Name the product that forms when SO3 is added to sulfuric acid. It could be oleum. You could also describe pyrosulfuric acid. Acid or even fuming sulfuric acid. Why is SO3 generally not added directly to water? So why not just, if why do it in two steps? Why not just throw it all in one step? Well, the reality is, is this is a very highly exothermic reaction. And what does that mean? If it's an exothermic reaction, it's going to release lots and lots and lots of heat. Okay? So I'm saying here, it releases heat. And that would mean that it's very, very difficult to control because it, be, it would speed up the rate of the reaction okay, and it would be much harder to control. So make sure that you think this through. It's a highly exothermic reaction um, and it would release a lot of heat. Therefore, difficult to control or dissipate the heat. Next question. In a moment. Sorry, I think I've gone too far. There we are. We are now moving on. A simplified diagram of a cell used in the chloroalkali industry. Now, chloroalkali industry, very important, where we're speaking about Chloro and alkali, you're thinking NaCl brine that is being separated into chloro, which is chlorine, and an alkali, sodium hydroxide. Right, very important process. Again, it's an electrolysis process. Concentrated sodium chloride solution, also called brine. So you've got NaCl aqueous is coming in. Okay? There is an electrode, X, chlorine gas is bubbling off. Cl2 gas is bubbling off. Gas A is also going to be bubbling off. There, you've got a porous membrane in between, and out the side here, you've got sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH solution. Write down the name of gas A. Well, gas A must be hydrogen gas, H2. So the name is what they're asking for, and it would be 
hydrogen gas. Remember, they've asked for the name, not the formula. Is electrode X the anode or the cathode? Give a reason for your answer. Well, let's have a look at it. You've got chlorine gas bubbling off. So the reaction that must have occurred here is that chlorine ions gave away electrons, kicked out electrons, and formed chlorine gas. Let's try and write an equation for that. It would be Cl2 formed, sorry, wrong way around. I'm going with the opposite reaction. It would be Cl minus ions formed Cl2 gas. How did it do that? Well, each one kicked out two electrons. So I had to have started with two at the beginning. Once again, grade 12, this is not something you have to memorize, although it might be useful. Um, I would certainly for your finals. But you could come along to this equation. We had it at the beginning. You're going to be starting with Cl2, Cl minus, and it is going to be oxidized, reading from right to left on this table. So we are asking, is electrode X the anode or the cathode? Now, the anode is always where oxidation occurs. The cathode is always where reduction occurs. So which one would this be? This must be what process is taking place here. Surely oxidation, because electrons are being released. It's the loss of electrons. Electrons are being kicked out. All right? So this must be the anode. Why? Give a reason for your answer. And your reason is going to be oxidation occurs here. And if you would like to, you could even write down that half reaction. But they are e even, they're asking us, they're asking us to write down the reduction reaction. So if you want to, you could write in here 2Cl minus forms Cl2 plus two electrons. Once again, every time I look in, at um, writing these, I just check quickly, is it electrically balanced? Are the charges balanced on either side of this reaction? And it's yes, two minus, two minus, left-hand side, right-hand side. It's balanced. I've written it correctly. Write down the half reaction that explains the formation of gas A. So gas A was hydrogen gas. And what is the half reaction? Well, I'm going to write it here. We can see it would be 2H2O forms... Oh, sorry, reduction, we're missing out, plus two electrons forms hydrogen gas. H2 gas plus OH minus, and I think there are two of them. Okay, that is the half reaction. Let's go and see where we got that. It would be somewhere near the middle here. There it is. The half reaction that I'm using. And I, I want you to make sure that you can write those out and identify this is going to be reduction. Notice it's gaining electrons. So here I'm reading from left to right on this table. Before this lap is finished. Done. So over. work hard focus, make sure that this is your time to shine. Let's keep going. Write down the function of the porous membrane. Well, that membrane is very, very important because it's keeping products separate from one another, um, it's allowing ions to move, so let's jot down a few thoughts. Obviously, it separates the anode and the cathode compartments of the cell, okay, or half cells, separates the anode and cathode half cells. It also allows ions to move. 
And specifically, I'm thinking here, the Na plus ions to pass through. But it does not allow the Cl minus ions to pass through. Are you with me? So it allows the Na plus ions to pass through, but not the um, but not the Cl minus ions. Explain what will happen if the porous membrane is removed. Well, then you're going to have a big issue, number of big issues. If that is removed, then you will have con contamination, which is mixing, okay, of the products formed. And what would happen is that the Cl minus would mix with the OH minus ions, um, and you would result, it would result in chlorine water and a whole bunch of, um, the purpose of one of these things is to make sure we can separate them into Cl minus and sodium hydroxide, right, and produce hydrogen gas. The purpose is to split it into its components. And so removing that porous membrane would result in contamination. Apart from the uses of products formed in this process, write down one positive impact and one negative impact on humans. So they're saying to us, do not choose the fact that, oh, yay, we get chlorine gas, and oh, yay, we get hydrogen gas, and oh, yay, we get um, sodium hydroxide, because those things obviously have their uses, which is why we're doing this process. But excluding those, what positive impact would this process have on humans? Well, if you're thinking about it, it's going to give us jobs, okay? There'll be people that are working in the factory that are resulting in this um, or in this, the ability to, you know, to do the chloroalkali process. What about one negative impact on humans? I want us to go back to this, and they've just given us a simple diagram, but X and Y must be linked up here, okay, to an external circuit to supply electrical current to this thing. So, this process is going to use huge amounts of electricity. Okay? There's a... And what do we know about electricity? In our country, there's quite a high demand for electricity and not that much that high supply. So the problem here is you could think about load shedding, all right? Power outages. Okay? Um, maybe you want to think about how much space a chloroalkali plant might take up. Okay, and you could think about, so that would be one option. If you want to think about land use, the chemical plant would take up space. That people could argue might be better used for housing okay, or something else like that. So you're now thinking practical applications of this industry. Remember that chloroalkali is an electrolysis reaction. So it's using an electric current to um, result in um, splitting or separating these chemicals into their components for the various uses of chlorine, hydrogen, and um, sodium hydroxide. 